All right. In episode number 21 of Murphy's Welcome to My World, we're going to be building a JV Models Company curved bridge kit. This is a fun little kit. When you open up the box, it just looks like you get a fistful of sticks. Doesn't look like much to start, but it does also have some very complete directions. The part of the directions that I like the most are the blueprint style, and I end up building right on top of this part of the instructions. What I do is I get permanent type two-sided tape, and I put bits of tape in all the places where there's going to be places that have glue. And it keeps it from sticking to the paper, and you can actually reuse the same piece over and over again. So what you do is you put the double-sided tape on, you start putting your sticks right on top of it, you add a little bit of glue, and the picture tells you exactly where to put the different parts. It tells you what size and exactly where to put them. Well, while we're talking about glue, let's talk a little bit more about it. Use the absolute least amount of glue possible whenever you're putting together a model. You can always come back and add more, but you can't take it off once it's there. Speaking of taking off, when you remove it from the double-sided tape, be very, very gentle. It's not very strong yet, so be easy. You flip it over and you add some more parts onto the other side, just like that. Pretty cool, huh? That double-sided tape really works. One of the things you have to decide on is what kind of bridge do you want? What do you think about the topography is underneath? And you make the supports to the right height of what you want your bridge to end up being. So you got to spend a little time thinking before you start building. Now, as far as planning goes, here's my favorite bridge information book from the nice folks at Model Railroad magazine. And so this is one of my references. Get one. Of course, being a curved bridge, you're going to have to figure out what arc of a curve that you want. So think about where it's going to go, figure it out, and then you mark it on a piece of paper. So you have the curve just the way you want it. Doesn't have to be all the way the same. You can change it in the middle if you want. And then you lay your old friend double-sided tape back down again. Then you put on the original, and this is upside down. Keep in mind that you're building it upside down. See all those little pieces that are going on there? The best tool that you can possibly have to make repetitive, accurate cuts is a chopper too by the Northwest Shortline folks. That's the best tool I have. You need to get one. Okay, now you've got all the cross ties there and it's starting to look like something. The next thing you have to do is make, well, what I like to call a glue lamb. It's a number of pieces of wood that you glue together at the correct arc. And this is going to be the support for the rail of the track that you're going to be putting across. So it has to be exactly right and then you glue it on. Of course, the next step is gluing all of the supports onto the bottom, onto the rail support. You want to make sure that they're evenly spaced and very symmetrical. Now you're starting to add the cross members. This is ones that run down in the middle, so you have to get them right. Once you get all these cross members in the right place, then you start adding these outside bits of wood that hold everything in place. Once again, the chopper 2 is invaluable to make all these accurate, repetitive cuts. Then the last thing you really got to do is make the walkway and make these boards for the walkway an appropriate length for the scale, whatever scale that you're working on. And then you're almost done. The next question, of course, is what are you going to color it with? I like to use a nice stain. Some people stain all their wood before they start working on it. Some people stain their wood after the project's done, like I do. It's kind of personal preference, whichever way you want. But of course, you want to use the least amount of glue possible because every place you've got glue, it's not going to take the color. Well, there it is. You have another wonderful pro project completed. Thanks for coming and joining us here at Murphy's Welcome to My World. Come back and see me anytime. Have fun with your trains. Bye, guys.